Welcome to the Distributed Systems and Blockchain channel. I'm Thomas Bocek and I'm the host of this YouTube news show. I've been reporting on current events and providing analysis for many years and I'm excited to bring my unique perspective to this platform. With my deep knowledge and understanding of the world around us, I will keep you informed. Uh, what the, what, my God, so much text. Um, actually, that was not me. That was Chat GPT, um, where I asked this question. Can you create an introduction of Thomas Bocek, who is hosting a YouTube news channel? And it gave me the following uh, verbose, quite verbose sentence. Uh, which is actually nice, but uh, it's a lot of text. And I also tried um, about news gathering, which is obviously not possible. So I asked here, can you give me the most interesting topics for the last week in the distributed systems and blockchain world? Unfortunately, it cannot do that. Since the training data does not cover all the latest topics until now, I think it was until last year. So um, up until that point, um, there is the knowledge, there is all the text around, but um, crawling sites and doing more recent stuff, this seems not to be possible. And this brings me to the first article. It's the following article here. It's about sign everything. Here in this article, the author explains um, that AI can help students with writing texts and that essays actually cannot be used anymore to assess the progress of the student because this chat GPT can also do it for you, as you have seen with the introduction of this news channel. And he argues that AI gets better at video and audio too, and uh, that his conclusion is that the content creators should cryptographically sign everything, for example, with a Web3 wallet. But what ChatGPT got actually right, um, it says my unique perspective um, that was in the intro text and um, unlike other news media that were funded by other crypto giants, for example, um, by Sam Bankman-Fried. Um, so he was funding um, the news company, The Block, that means uh, he had uh, an incentive or he could push topics or he could have pushed topics that was in favor of FTX. I'm not sure if he did it or not, but since he funded uh, this news company that uh, it's a possibility. In any case, uh, many people now realize that we live in a world where some content is created by machines and we are not able to tell the difference is it a machine or is it a human. I said some content as for example Stack Overflow is complaining about a search of bogus answers where AI did not actually get the question. So there was just an answer for whatever question the AI thought it is but it was actually bogus. And I don't think it's that scary um, that the AI can do such tasks as creating this introduction for this news channel. Um, I think it's great as those are trivial tasks. This is trivial content and uh, this is probably the most boring part for creation, the, the, the trivial stuff. And if AI helps with that, uh, you then have time to focus on the more interesting things. And about the Stack Overflow, so here is the, the article where Stack Overflow said that they will ban answers from ChatGPT because of so many bogus answers. In the past episodes, I mentioned Molly White, who was bashing Web3. This time she did an awesome overview of the FTX universe on this side here. So we have all the investors, we have um, the FTX with Alameda Research and we have here clients that borrowed or that, that um, have money on FTX which is now frozen. 
um, she then also uh, marked those in red who are bankrupt and uh, this is a very nice overview I really like that a lot so here you can browse how many companies are somehow involved in this FTX universe the next article is from Vitalik Buterin, uh, the co-creator of Ethereum, talking about the crypto space. It's the following article here and uh, what he thinks is currently working great. So first he talks about his coffee shop experience that he can pay his coffee with ETH. So um, he was really fan of that and um, he also mentioned pros and cons. The cons that it took some time until it was um, on chain, a couple of minutes, and it also costs a bit of gas fees. So that was the negative side. The positive side that he was in uh, Argentina and he could easily pay with his um, ETH at this coffee shop. So he sees cryptocurrencies as a real alternative and he also talks about uh, stable coins. He also mentioned that the FTX collapse pushes more transactions on chain because if you're on a sex, uh, you don't necessarily need to go on chain. But now um, there is a push definitely to have more transactions on chain. The second topic he mentions is DeFi. Uh, keep it simple well that's not that easy um, and he says the current state uh, is that DeFi is stabilizing and um, he saw it before the collapse before Terra, Terra Luna before um, FTX he saw it as a overcapitalized monster but now um, it has calmed down and actually is quite useful for example as the glue layer between assets so that you can trade assets without actually an intermediary such as FTX. The third point he mentioned is about identity, ENS, about popes uh, that we had in the lecture as well and also the non-transferable popes, uh, the SBTs, the soulbound tokens. He talks about that and um, as a fourth point he talks about DAO, decentralized autonomous organizations, where one core part is voting um, this is also something that we um, look in this lecture uh, as a challenge task so this is one um, task of this challenge task to have something that you can vote on um, he also mentions quadratic voting let me give you a quick example of what quadratic voting is so let's assume you have a system with um, users that have 10 votes so each user has 10 votes and can vote on multiple issues and you can also pay for voting and then in this example if a voter have 10 votes and uses them for a single issue then uh, if you have quadratic voting so this will cost 10 to the power of 2 which uh, is 100 so you have to pay 100 and um, if you um, evenly distribute uh, your, your votes across all the issues you have 10 to the power of 1 you have then 10 votes um, 10 bucks so uh, the system allows voters to indicate their true preference and to avoid actually the winner takes it all and uh, this avoids all the problems uh, it also introduces some problems but uh, i think it's a nice concept he talks about then the last point the fifth point he talks about hybrid applications um, and here again he mentions voting and he also mentions other applications such as government registries, corporate accounting for example we had in the news that the centralized exchanges they are storing the, the proof of reserve on chain so that people can actually go on chain and see hey how much reserves do they have uh, he also mentions supply chain applications uh, 
probably not the ones on a private blockchain like TradeLens that we talked also last week about. And at the end, he mentions an upcoming feature that other blockchains already have, but not Ethereum. It's account uh, abstraction. Uh, because uh, in the current form, um, we have in Ethereum the so-called externally owned accounts, which is controlled by a private key. It sits, uh, if you have MetaMask, it sits in MetaMask and uh, can perform simple actions like sending transactions, signing transactions, sending the transactions and uh, creating smart contracts using uh, the, the signature from this private key and that's it. And uh, with account abstractions you can have more complex use cases and it would be for example possible to make uh, multiple keys for signing a requirement or allow other keys to operate this account and this would allow actually for a better UX for some use cases so um, th th this can actually bring a better user experience to the end user. So much for the blockchain world. In the last article, this is about CRDTs, um, conflict-free replicated data types. I mentioned those also in the news last week. And um, here the article talks about that you actually might not need them and the author argues that CRDTs are useful for peer-to-peer -peer applications where you don't have a single central authority and he argues that browsers are inherently not peer-to-peer -peer, so you actually don't uh, need CRTs uh, in, in a browser setting. Um, so if you have a central authority that can determine the order, CRDTs, edge, uh, um, CRDTs add too much complexity. <laughs> 